Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. My name is Sarah and welcome to What the Horror, the channel where we talk about horror movies old and new. Also, welcome to another episode of Monsters 101, where we look at and study the monsters of horror, taking a look at the villains, ghosts, demons and creatures that haunt the screen. For this episode, we're looking at Death Angels, the antagonist of both the 2018 A Quiet Place and its 2020 sequel, A Quiet Place Part 2. Death Angels are a race of super-evolved hostile alien creatures who arrived on Earth when it was hit by a meteor. Death Angels have no eyes and so are completely blind, instead using sound to hunt and kill, and with armour plates covering their bodies, making them almost indestructible, they make their way across the planet, killing anything that makes a noise. In a quiet place, the Death Angels stalk and inhabit the surrounding area of the Abbott family's farm and further afield in A Quiet Place Part 2. The Death Angels are the concept idea of writers Brian Woods and Scott Beck and writer and director John Krasinski. Krasinski had a vision in his head of what the creatures were and how he wanted them to look. He wanted them to look as though they had perfectly evolved to no longer need eyes and to be, quote, somewhat humanoid. He was also adamant that the aliens would have flaps on their heads, which opened up to expose their ears beneath. The creature's design was headed by production designer Jeffrey Beecroft and visual effects supervisor Scott Farrer, and industrial light and magic actually created the creatures. Woods, Beck and Krasinski turned to nature for inspiration and ideas to pitch to the design crew evidence of which you can see in the final design, such as a physique like that of a bat, armour plates that lift off the head like a school of fish, and skin similar to that of a mummy or bog person, which is a body that has been mummified in a peat bog. To be honest, the origins of the Death Angels is largely unknown in regard to their origins and existence in space. What we do know is that they have potentially existed for a millennium and over that time have evolved into almost perfect hunters and killers. The Death Angels were hiding inside of a meteorite which crashed landed on Earth, hitting Mexico with the force of a nuclear bomb. They then quickly spread across the rest of the country and eventually spread to the rest of the world. In the very initial after effects, 2,580 people were injured, but within three months the majority of Earth's animal and human population had been thinned out. We can see evidence of this in the newspaper articles that Lee has pinned up in his basement office. We can see that the Death Angels have made it worldwide from an article which says, quote, Shanghai death toll in the hundreds of thousands. While there was apparently only one meteorite, there is also an article which claims there are 128 landing sites confirmed. But perhaps this refers to landing sites of the aliens as they have then spread out. The meteor falling initially knocks out the radio in a lot of towns and so with no information, no help, and the Death Angels running around killing anything that makes a sound, panic and mayhem ensues as people try to come to terms with the arrival of the aliens and try to figure out what happens next. People learn very quickly that the Death Angels hunt using sound. We see evidence of this again in the newspaper headlines, such as, they can hear you and it's sound. Churches, mosques and temples are flooded by people running for safety and comfort, quote, turning to a higher power to grasp the unfathomable, while the city of New York goes into lockdown. The government and military become involved, offering advice of get underground for safety and repeating the phrase stay silent, stay alive. Officials make discoveries as they attempt attacks on the Death Angels. They discover that the aliens are armoured with bulletproof plates as the attack on them fails. But they also discover that the aliens can't swim. An important discovery is the National Guard decides to, where possible, load people into boats and move them to the safety of islands. Unfortunately, humans being humans, we of course spoil this with greed, and in one case, of the 12 boats which could be loaded with people, only two made it safely to the island. And finally, a Department of Defence announcement is made, which consists of the following. You are now alone. The government, as we know it, has been compromised due to the invasion of hostile alien forces. Remain safe, stay still, stay alive. 
Death angels, while being an extraterrestrial race, are actually almost humanoid in appearance. They have a body, a head, and four limbs. Their physique, shaped like that of a wingless bat, appears emaciated with a very slim waist and limbs, which are covered in a browny black skin similar to that of a mummified body. The skin is actually made up of multiple armoured plates that protect the Death Angel's vulnerable flesh hidden underneath and from attack, making them almost near indestructible. Death Angels have evolved to have no eyes and are completely blind. However, hidden under the facial armour plates are highly sensitive and very slimy looking ears. The plates on the alien's head can move and extend, allowing the ear to be exposed and for the Death Angel to locate and finally pinpoint the source of sound. They have rows of sharp teeth lining their mouths, however, while these can be used to help open things and cut through metal, they don't seem to actually use them for killing. The Dark Angel's limbs are capable of grasping, the technical term for this being prehensile, like a monkey's tail. This means that they are able to scale and climb things. We see evidence of this when one of the Dark Angels climbs the corn silo in pursuit of the children. Their long limbs are topped off with incredibly sharp, razor-edged claws, with three on each of the front limbs and one on each of the back limbs. The claws are the weapons they use to kill and wound, but also for ripping open metal when they need to escape or to access prey. They tend to move around on all fours, but are able to stand on their hind limbs if needed or in moments of distress. The Death Angels also possess incredible speed and strength. At full speed, they can cover miles in minutes. This makes it impossible to outrun a Dark Angel. We see evidence of their strength again in the corn silo when one of them, desperate to escape from the frequency of Reagan's hearing aid, rips open the metal panels of the silo. As I mentioned before, the Dark Angels are a highly evolved race. They are seemingly capable of surviving in any climate and environment, and they neither have the need to eat or even apparently sleep. Interestingly, they also have the ability to affect electricity. We see evidence of this when the radios cut out and lights flicker when the aliens are approaching. As we mentioned earlier in appearance, the Death Angels are blind and so hunt using sound. Once they have heard a sound, they will run at full speed towards it, usually landing directly on their target. On occasion, however, if the source of sound has stopped emitting it, the Death Angel will pause and extend its facial armour plate to relocate and pinpoint the sound. To kill, the Death Angels use the razor-edged claws at the end of their long limbs to slash and tear. Most kills are generally quick. If a quick slash is enough to kill, then they will leave it at that. However, we do see or hear the odd kill where they appear to just go to town and attack the target multiple times, mutilating and eviscerating their victim. We see evidence of this with uh, Man on Island, Marina Man, and of course, Paul Lee. Despite us seeing evidence of the Death Angels hunting both humans and animals, there is no evidence that they eat anything that they kill. This suggests that they either kill out of instinct, simply wanting to eliminate the sound, or even more sinister, for fun. Consider Bose and the old man's death. This appears to be out of instinct and wanting to end the loud noise that both of them create. Then consider when one of the death angels follows Evelyn into the basement. It appears to search for her despite the fact that she is no longer making a sound. This could be evidence of them hunting for fun. The Death Angels are a race of creatures that have evolved over the years to be an almost perfect killer. Gunshots against their armour plates don't work, and fire doesn't hurt them either. However, they're not indestructible. The Death Angels, while incredibly difficult to kill, do have a couple of weaknesses, and as such, there are a couple of ways to defeat and kill them. The first weakness the Death Angels have is that they're unable to swim in bodies of deep water. We see in the first film that one of the Death Angels swims through the flooded basement. However, this is when the water is not that deep and there is the security of the basement floor beneath them. In the sequel, when Emmett and Regan are attacked at the marina, we see one of the Death Angels jump into the ocean and drown. Their other weakness is that they're hypersensitive to high frequencies such as the one made by Regan's hearing aid. 
Seeing as how the death angels are sensitive to sound, the high frequency causes them incredible pain and distress. In this moment, the death angel opens its facial plates and extends them fully out, almost locked in this position. In doing this, they expose the delicate flesh underneath, leaving them vulnerable. In the first A Quiet Place, we see Evelyn take advantage of this situation by shooting one of them in the head while its armor plates are extended. In the sequel, Reagan has the idea of making her way to a radio station located on a nearby island, who is still able to broadcast. Once there, she places her hearing aid on the mic and broadcasts the frequency over the air. This means that anyone with access to a radio can take advantage of the broadcast to attack the Death Angels. And this is exactly what we see both Reagan and Marcus do. Of course, not everyone will have access to a radio or be near a deep body of water. So what can you do in these instances? Well, even if you can't kill a Death Angel, there are precautions you can take to help keep yourself safe. The root of your survival is the ability to keep quiet. This can include the following precautions. Walking barefoot and laying down paths of sand in order to reduce the chance of your feet making sound. Don't speak unless it is absolutely safe to do so. For example, if you're under layers of thick concrete or if you are located near something that is making a louder sound such as a river or a waterfall. Instead, use visual ways of communicating such as sign language, fire beacons and colour-coded lights. We see in the first film that Lee is attempting to use Morse code over a shortwave radio to reach out to other countries. Unfortunately, we can see from his international shortwave frequency chart that he has reached out to numerous countries such as England, Denmark, Japan, Greece and Australia, but to no avail. You can also, if possible, live in underground structures and basements. And more importantly, once you have found somewhere safe to live, don't forget to soundproof it. The use of leaves as plates and eating with your hands also eliminates the noise of mealtimes, but avoid foods which will create a lot of sound. So no more bags of crisps, it's just too risky. And of course, you'll need to fill the long hours and recreational games are okay, as long as you swap out any pieces which may make a noise with soft material pieces. Gather medical supplies so that you can tend to ailments. For example, when Evelyn keeps track of the baby's heart and her blood pressure. You can also track noises and creaks in your home and mark them out so that you can avoid them, as seen in the Abbott house in the first film. We know that the death angels move within human speed, so outrunning the creatures just isn't an option. However, you can conceal yourself and hide until it is safe to move on. We see evidence of this in the first film when Lee and Marcus come across the old man in the woods who screams in order to kill himself. Lee and Marcus run out of the immediate area of the old man, but then hide silently behind a tree until it is safe to leave. Of course, if you're lucky enough to find yourself in a situation similar to the Abbots, then you have a much higher chance of survival. The Abbots have a house on farmland and so are able to grow and harvest their own crops. They also have access to a river where they can get fresh water and fish. They also have access to barns and basements to store tools and supplies. Unfortunately, if you live in a city, then things are going to be far more difficult for you. We see evidence of shops being raided for supplies, but what happens when those supplies run out? You have no access to livestock or crops. And as we see in a newspaper on Lee's board, New York went into lockdown and had no working elevators in the high rise buildings or access to water. Well, thank you guys for attending another Monsters 101. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. As always, let me know your thoughts on this week's monster down below. What are your thoughts on the Death Angels? For me personally, I find the fact that they only kill for either fun or to stop a noise really unsettling. I can get behind most creature attacks because it's usually just their nature. They're killing for survival, to either eat or to protect themselves. But these guys killing things they don't even need to eat? Man, that's dark. That's some kind of twisted human type sh As for next week's episode, I believe I have a deep dive into the menu for you. 
Yes Chef. Very excited for this one. I think The Menu is an incredible movie. If you've not seen it yet, maybe give it a watch and then join me next week for a chat and deep dive. This may be subject to change as I'm trying to work next week's episode around my upcoming trip to Ireland, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be The Menu. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. I know sometimes YouTube doesn't show my videos to you guys, so maybe if you try the bell option, you won't miss it. But in the meantime, thank you as always for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye guys. <laughs>